everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and let's leave no dye behind. Today I am going to take some Knit Picks Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn, which is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and dye it with some really old stock solution and some um, acid dye powders that I have been playing around with today and need to use up in some kind of way so I don't waste them. Now, the two colors I'm working with today, I have a 1% stock solution of Jacquard Pink that I mixed a year ago. Um, and then the other thing is I have some powder of the Dharmic Acid Dye um, in the color Forest Green. And I thought, what will we get if we take this pink dye, which I'm just sort of measuring. All right, we've got about half a cup of that pink dye. What will happen if we do a pink base and then layer that green on top of it? Right here in our pan, I have four cups of cool tap water with no vinegar, and I just added in that jacquard pink dye. And now I'm gonna take the dry sock yarn. Uh, first I wanna make sure I add a removable zip tie onto it. Um, I'm gonna add this in so we can soak up some of the pink. And then eventually we're gonna speckle on that forest green color. All right, so this yarn is, you know, there's again no vinegar in here. The yarn is dry, um, so it'll take a little bit of time to soak up and soak in some of this color. Usually this is a yarn that goes in and gets wet pretty quickly, but maybe that's with warm water. Interesting. So we're trying to squeeze it so we can get this pink in and, huh, we might end up with a more pastel-y pink um, than I might have expected, which I think is kind of cool. All right, I'm gonna start, hmm, I'm shortly gonna turn on the heat. I don't mind there being some white patches, but one of the reasons for starting with it cold is that I am gonna get some better coverage of the color than, especially with it dry, than I might have otherwise. But you can see that, you know, some of that color is soaking in to our fiber already. Um, ooh, I like that pink. I'm gonna add another cup of water um, since it looked like a lot of that color sort of soaked in and the water soaked in. And I'm not gonna turn on the burners on my gas stove so we can start heating it up. And I also want to add some vinegar. And I'm going to add, I think, two tablespoons of white vinegar here. And to sort of mix things up, I'm just going to sort of shake it on here. Maybe I might end up wanting some more water. Needless to say, we've got a nice, it's almost a Pepto Bismol pink. Um, it is a little too saturated to be a true pastel. Um, it is a paler pink, but you know, it's not like a baby pink or something like that. All right, I'm getting this set up. And once we're nice and hot, then I will come through and we'll do our first round of green speckles. But given that these colors are, um, I'm wondering if what we're going to end up with is something that's going to feel really Christmassy or if it might feel sort of spring-like. Uh, it could really go either way. But I'll come back in a few minutes once we start seeing some bubbles. All of the equipment that I'm using today is dedicated dye equipment. I don't use any of this for food. And when I'm dealing with the actual powders, I will be wearing safety goggles and a respirator. Um, so that way I don't inhale any of the dry powder. The yarn is starting to pop a bit, so therefore I turned down the heat too low. And I think we're nice and plenty hot to do some speckling. I am going to, you can tell I'm wearing the respirator now because I've gotten super muffled. But I'm going to put a link to the one that I'm wearing in the video description. But this mask, which actually doesn't muffle my voice as much, is also one that I've really enjoyed using. Now, think 
thankfully I've never like detected any color residue on either mask but it's still better to be safe um, especially when you're dealing with like your lungs and stuff so I said I pulled out a lot of powder that's probably like three or four grams I'm not going to use anywhere close to all of this as I start speckling on this pink and personally I still really like speckling with my fingers um, this looks beautiful, uh, mainly because it's like a nice, like, whoops, cool toned green, but oh, this is, this looks awesome. I never would have thought to mix like a green with a pink and I had these dyes like sitting on the counter and I was like, you know what? I should really just go for it. And I am so, so glad that I did. All right, trying to make sure I pay a little attention to those edges and cool. So in some areas, I definitely got a little more splotchy than speckly. Uh, I will zoom in there. So you can see in some areas I was heavier and lighter, but I really wanted to see how this green and pink would pair together and if the green might look brown but really the character of this forest green is showing through that looks pretty true to what i've seen on many many other sort of applications that i've done with this color lately so i am absolutely thrilled i'm now going to let this go ahead and sort of sit for at least five minutes and then we'll flip it over and add some color to the other side all right let's see all right, we do have some color around the edge. Uh, I'm sure we got pretty good penetration. I do want to speckle the back some. I know that I was debating grabbing like a yarn mop, as I like to oh so affectionately refer to it, because I know that some of that extra green you can see here, we're turning a little purple, sort of dulling some of the sharpness of these like bright speckles that we got but you know what we're still mixing pink and green it's still like a great little experiment um so i'm gonna just go for it i do sort of wish well hindsight is 2020 right we still are creating this pink and green colorway okay I did go and dry off my hands a bit. I was eyeing these colors on my counter thinking like, oh, I really need to, should like mix them together. And it's like, oh, I don't know what would happen if I mix them. That might be a little strange. So I was like, fine, I won't mix them. Ha 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 ha. But now I have. There we go. All right, I think that this is gonna be a really, really fun yarn. And I still have a ton of this color left. A ton, a ton, a ton. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to figure out something to do with the rest of these leftovers. Once again, I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for five minutes. The five minutes are up. I'm gonna turn off the heat here. And it does look like there's still some color in here, but I'm actually gonna let that drain off. Um, well, actually, it's not that hot. I'm not gonna try to pick that all up because I do want to preserve some of the pink in this yarn. Whoops. Um, but I think that it is really pretty. So I'm gonna set this aside to cool so then we can wash it. Next time I should try this with an apple green or a lime green, but I did notice I got some dye on my hand. So maybe that came from the zip tie. Uh-oh. I'm not seeing any real bleeding. So that could have just been a little bit of a coincidence. There's maybe a hint of color. But let's add some clear dish soap. That way we can just see if we're gonna get any other bleeding. Sometimes the soap sort of kicks off some of that color. And 
Hmm. Maybe like the barest hint of green. If there is bleeding, it is super subtle. I think, yeah, I think there might be a tiny amount. Um, I wonder how much is from to remove the zip tie. The zip tie is nylon, so it definitely will absorb color. Um, but there could also have been some extra dye trapped on top. This forest green is a fairly blue <laughs> green. Um, it's really more of a teal, which is why one of the reasons why it probably worked with that pink so well. It did spread. I think I didn't quite have enough acid in there. And so while we do have some pink, it's feeling a lot more purpley. Either way, it's a beautiful color. And I'm going to rinse it one or two more times and then hang it up to dry. You guys, we mixed pink and green and we didn't really get any brown. We have a tiny bit of purple where some of the green spread out a bit. But I'm actually loving this combination. It almost feels like thorns or something cool where you're seeing mostly flowers versus leaves. I don't know. There's something about it that works really well and it doesn't feel Christmassy or anything at all, which was one thing that did occur to me as I was mixing these colors together. I think that if my water level was a little bit lower and my acid content were a little bit higher, that these speckles would not have spread out as much. Uh, when I flipped the yarn around, the you know there was some green in the water and the yarn did soak that up, which gave us some of these more greenish halos, purpley hues where the green spread out a bit more. This resulted in a really, really lovely yarn. It's just these speckles weren't quite as sharp and punchy as I was initially really excited about. I am also really excited about this project because I'm finally almost done using up these year old stock solutions. And I do a lot of yarn dyeing. I don't think I'm going to be mixing one liter stock solutions of colors again in the future unless I have a plan where I want to use a lot of that color in a short period of time. The stock solutions lasted great. There were some consistency issues with the concentration and so that's a big reason why it's not really worth it to me to keep it them a long time because unless you know that a quarter cup of dye at the beginning is going to be the same as a quarter cup at the bottom. I don't know, it's just worth mixing fresh uh, so that way you can have some consistency between colors. I think another reason that this worked so well is that the forest green has a lot of blue in it. It's not like a grass green or an apple green or something where it might start to shift a little more brown. Some of those, since it's closer to a teal, um, that, yeah, since it's a very blue, I mean, it's definitely a green versus a teal, but since it is in that realm, I think that the warmth of the pink worked really nicely with it. So what do you think? Are there any other complementary colors that you would like to try to mix together? And maybe they actually won't cancel each other out or create a brown. Maybe you'll still be able to see the tones show through. Now, granted, if I was using a true red or a more saturated pink versus this lighter pink, then you know maybe the green wouldn't have shown up as well as this true green. So I think having a super pigmented dark green really did help us. But, oh, I love this yarn. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, comment. I'd love to hear what you think about this project and what you think I should try next. And if you'd like to support us on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform that connects friends with the creators that they enjoy and allows you to subscribe to them in exchange for some cool perks like some behind the scenes access, early access to new content, and more. You can find a link in the video description and the iCard. Thank you so much for watching.